Hey guys, welcome back to Fusion Fat Loss and Nutrition Transform You Online. This is week number four, and yes, we've made it. We're at food. If it's the one question I'm asked regularly, Craig, what should I eat? I'm so confused. And in reality, guys, I don't blame you one bit because um, there is so much conflicting information out there, and it would seem on face value that a lot of the information that does exist is from credible sources, um, and indeed most is, in that um, they're written by individuals with their doctorate degrees or PhD, experienced uh, individuals working within the diet and uh, health and well-being sector. So in many cases, um, I can understand why people jump from one uh, aspect of health and well-being to the next. Um, in many ways, almost as if uh, changing their underwear, it's as often as, and this is where some of the problem lie, guys. So what we're going to deal with today is the start of our four-week journey on food and hydration, and we'll look at um, what diet rehab is all about. So as I said, there is so much information. It's just ridiculous, to be honest, in that um, everyone's out to make a buck basing their ideals to be the one and only reason that you're failing. I'm here to tell you, as I have from week one, that um, there is no one individual aspect that is why you fail. It's a multitude of things and um, we try to cover those in all aspects heavily in Transform You, in that it's about the way you think, the way you perform, so your exercise, and what you're eating to allow the performance in the gym or on the treadmill or in the water or on the bike to elicit the responses that you want, meaning that your body composition changes. Yes, you burn fat, you build more muscle tissue, and you ascertain a greater self-worth. That's what it's all about. So when we look at this one over here, the South Beach diet, you know, it's a low calorie, moderate fat diet. When we look at the paleo diet, okay, so we know that's all about eating close to nature and no dairy and no grains. Then we look at the zone diet by Dr. Bar uh, Barry Spears, and that's about a percentage. So everything you eat is about 40% protein, 30% carbohydrate, 30% fat. The wonderful Dr. Aikens diet, as we know, again, it was all about fat and no carbohydrates and low protein, so a pretty uh, ketogenic diet. So there's a plethora, and I'm sure, you know, unless you've been living under a rock, you may well have some of these, um, if not all of them. If you were to visit my practice, you'd see that I have... Uh, heavy investment in books and a lot of these would be there. The reality is that success is about taking from all of these and putting them into a format that you can use for life. So what is good nutrition? We start again. I like to maintain a well-rounded diet. Um, I think we all do. And uh, even though this is all in jest and all in fun, the reality is that it's not far from the truth. Um, and I'm not talking necessarily about, you know, glazed donuts and pepperoni pizzas and chocolate cake and hamburgers as being the mainstay to your eating regime. But what it is saying is that it's all about variety and diversity. If you're eating, this, eating sorry, the same foods over and over again um, and you're finding that there's a lot of elimination and uh, deprivation, well, then you're going to be in starvation. And that's going to lead to one thing, and that's fail. And it's something I discuss regularly. So the reality is I like to maintain a well-rounded diet should be the nucleus of your success in regards to the food thing. And we'll discuss that further as we continue our journey today. So what is good nutrition? Fundamentally, everybody out there, three things must be obtained from a sensible eating regime. 
Three things must be maintained or sorry, ascertained. An improvement in your body composition, as I stated in the lead-in, that means a decrease in unwanted dangerous body fat, so you've got less of those um, muffin tops, and an increase in lean muscle mass. For those of you who don't know, the only tissue within your body, my body, my dog's body, is that burns fat and burns carbohydrate is muscle. So if you're trying to burn stored body fat, you need to be focusing on muscle tissue. And ladies out there, I'm not talking about you turning into she-hulks. And for you young gentlemen out there, I'm not talking about turning you into the Hulk either. But what I'm talking about is focusing heavily on maintaining at least the muscle tissue you have and if not being one of the lucky ones to increase your lean muscle tissue a little bit, which will elicit a greater response in regards to you achieving greater health, greater well-being, and most importantly, an improvement in um, your body composition. Again, body composition meaning you carry less body fat and you maintain a higher percentage of muscle tissue, which is a win-win for us all. Secondly, so outside of improving your body shape, and the makeup of your body, the next thing it must do is help you improve the way that you feel every single day. Does what you're eating assist in you defying disease and support your natural physiology? Does it allow you to avoid every cold that's traveling through the office? Does it allow you to avoid being laid up in bed week after week because your children come home from school uh, with a sniffle and a cold? Does it avoid you just feeling like you've been hit by a bus after a, a solid eight hours of work? You come home and you're absolutely obliterated. You have no energy. You're just a shot duck. If your food is not allowing you to perform that way, well, unfortunately, then it's not correct and it needs a, an adjustment. So not only should your nutrition on a day-to-day -day basis allow you to improve the way you look, so what your body's made up. It should also allow you on a day-to-day -day basis to feel wonderful and have great health. And as Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said eons ago, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. If only everyone was to focus on that today, we'd have such such a greater quality of life, I kid you not. And finally, outside of improving the way you look and the way that your health is and the way you feel, we've also got to be able to improve your day-to-day -day performance. So not only adding years to your life, but life to those years. You're effervescent, you're radiant, you're full of vivaciousness. That means once you've had a solid day at work, and it may be a day under the pump, you come home from work, you pick up your gym bag and you go off and have a great gym workout. Or you head to a fitness class and you have a great fitness class. Or you put your runners on and hit the pavement. Or you put your swimmers and goggles on and you do some splashing around in the pool. You've got to have the ability to perform excellent on a day-to-day -day basis. So you've got to have the right fueling to elicit the response that you want in regards to day-to-day -day performance. And again, as we've discussed over these first three weeks, if your performance is underdone and you're performing less than optimally, then the chances of success long-term in regards to weight maintenance, fat loss, and changing your body shape is minimum at best. Because if your performance is hindered in the area of stimulus, so if you can't exercise as hard as you want, well then the performance outcomes through food are going to be limited because if the performance isn't there, it's going to be very difficult to change your body shape. So again, good nutrition must improve body shape, improve your health and well-being, and on a day-to-day -day basis, improve your performance. Yes, you're at your optimum. Good nutrition is not focusing on one specific aspect of nutrition alone. As it states, this will almost always lead to failure in most people. We've heard, we've read, the research has told us over and over again, 80 to 85% of people who lose weight regain all that weight plus some, so yes, interest, within 12 months. 
That is a ridiculously horrendous statistic. And why does it happen, guys? Truly, it's because you're not focusing on lifestyle. You're focusing on diet, deprivation, elimination, self-sabotage, starvation, all of those horrendous things that we know lead to fail. It's those outrageous exercise regimes, hours and hours a day, or in the morning exercise, in the afternoon exercise. No, I can't go to a social convention because I can't eat any of the foods there. So then you end up with orthorexic eating disorders. It's horrendous, guys. 80 to 85% of people fail. That, that has to stop, truly. And I kid you not, unless you use those first three weeks that we've already introduced as the nucleus to your success, a mind massage, you're just going to be another one of those statistics. As it states, no focusing on one specific aspect of nutrition alone. It's not just about carbohydrates. It's not just about fat. It's not just about protein. It's not just about um, portion control. It's about all of those things, guys. So it's not just about low carb or no carb, high fat, severe calorie restriction, elimination of things. Dieting is not the solution. Dieting is not the solution to long-term success. As I've stated again many times, you can lose weight just by changing your eating regime. That's undebatable. But the secret is, can you sustain that weight loss for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And without exercise, nutrition, mind massage, community, community and applied action, it's near impossible. As I've stated, dieting alone is not the solution. So what the hell is? Diet. It took a lot of willpower, but I finally gave it up. I know, again, it's a bit of an icebreaker and a bit of a moment where I just let you reset and take in a bit of the information that you've already uh, gleaned from this presentation. But the reality is that it has a lot of foundation to that statement. It took a lot of willpower, but I finally gave up dieting. And with giving up dieting comes one thing, guys, success. Once you say goodbye to dieting, long-term lifestyle success will be yours. But as with everything, it is a process and it does take time, commitment, applied action, tenacity, persistence, all of those doing words. So as we said before, if dieting is not the solution, what the hell is? Let's have a look, huh? Food is metabolic information. What do I mean by that? Well, as you'll see from this definition, to rewire, re-engineer, or reboot your metabolism, you need to invest in the right metabolic information. Yes, invest in Mother Nature's pharmacy. Off a tree, out the ground, walk the land, swims the ocean. Say no to HI. What is HI? HI, for those of you who have never listened to one of my video blogs before, is human interference. So what we're really talking about here is rewiring and reprogramming a metabolism that is stalled. It's like it's just not gained traction. It's spinning its wheels in the mud. It's not moving forward consistently, persistently with motivated movement. It's stuck. It's just spinning. And no matter what you do, you go nowhere. You might lose a bit of weight, then you gain it again. You might be able to die for a little while and then it gets too hard because it's too laborious and too tedious and too difficult. So you don't go anywhere. You take one step forward, but three steps backward. Is that your life that you've had forever and ever and ever and you continually self-sabotage in that way? If you're nodding your head again, guys, this is where you get uh, the goosebumps and your hair stands up on end on your arms and the back of your neck because now's the time to go, woohoo, I'm excited. I know I'm moving forward. Why? Because I've got the solution to that problem. These are all the things I've been doing in the past. I've been absolutely destroying 
my metabolism. The one thing that I need working for me is the one thing in most cases that we're just turning a blind eye to and absolutely destructing with detrimental, detrimental, catastrophic event. So we say no to human interference. Human interference, high sugar, highly refined, you know, lots of uh, trans fats, you know, those donuts, croissants, pizzas, pastries, cakes, lollies, crisps, all of those things that add their their anti-nutrients. They take away all the good things out of our body. Now, I'm not saying that you just eliminate them forever, but what I'm saying is there's something that are not in your diet on a day-to-day basis. There's something that might be there once or twice a week in a little tiny portion that just gives you that, oh, that was great. That allows me to live my lifestyle. But by not eating them regularly, it allows the things that you replace those nasties with, those off a tree, out the ground, swim the land, walk the ocean, it boosts your metabolism. It allows your metabolism to flourish, blossom, and mature. So quality metabolic reprogramming comes from this thing called PCO36. What is that? It's protein, it's carbohydrate, it's omega-3, it's omega-6. It's things close to nature. As I've stated, off a tree, out the ground, walk the land, swim the ocean. It couldn't be any clearer, guys. The reality is all of your nutritional, uh, clear, clean, precise data that allows your metabolism to flourish, bloom, and blossom comes from that regular injection of nourishment through each and every one of your meals. You're having a protein, you're having some carbohydrate, whether it's you know fibrous carbohydrate like your salads and your vegetables, whether it's starchy carbohydrates like sweet potato, pumpkin, it's and it's your omega-3s and 6s. So whether it's macadamia, whether it's avocado, whether it's almonds, whether it's um, your fish oils, you know, all of these coconut oil, it's wonderful foods that are, again, close to nature and have a lot of bang for buck. So it's truly about investing in good, good, clean data into the greatest computer process on the planet, you, and eliminating or preventing lots or any metabolic spam. And again, it is truly what affects your well-being, the way you look, the way you feel, and the way you perform. And wasn't that what I said about earlier in the day? Good nutrition has to, has to, has to supply a better body in regards to less fat, more muscle, greater health and well-being. So you feel great day every single day. And your performance is like never before. You're no longer the Volkswagen Beetle, but the Porsche. Everything is done at an energy level that is just optimal. Magic, isn't it? Truly is magical. So we talked about metabolic spam, didn't we? Here we go. Again, another great icebreaker, but have a look at that picture. That's one of the most important organs we have, the old ticker, the old heart. And again, once we eat all these trans fatty foods, you know, again, refined carbohydrates, They're not off a tree. They're not out the ground. They're human interfered with foods. They're made in labs. They're made in processing machines. They are just far from optimal. And then all of those things are traveling around in your most precious bloodstream. Where does it end up? In that ticker. And that ticker has to pump it out and circulate it through your body and get it to all your working muscles and all those other organs. In the end, they just go can't do this anymore. You're just poisoning me, my friend. Again, the mantra is nourish, not punish. Look after yourself, team. And it comes through the fork. Your food does truly affect your genes. Now, it's a new slide that I've entered into this presentation. It's about your genome, your blueprint, your special, individual, unique blueprint. So you hear about your DNA, yes. You hear about your genes, yes. Does your food truly affect what happens in the gene, in the DNA? Does it? Hell yeah! 
Every time you invest in something that's like on this plate here, this young lass is hooking into, Mother Nature's gifts, look at that, dietary fiber, things that are prebiotics that are going to have those 100 trillion cells of yours sitting in your 27-foot tube to mouth the butt, your gastrointestinal tract, just frenzies, partying on like you wouldn't believe. If that tucker is going into those little bacteria, fungi, and viruses that sit in your microbiota, they are going to party on big time. And guess what your reward will be? Short-chain fatty acids like butyrate. What do they do? They fuel your immune system. They enable you to perform like a god. Isn't that what you're after? I know I get fascinated and go a bit over the top with this stuff, guys. Why? It's freaking important. If your health isn't important and you're not willing to invest in that, God forbid, I don't know what you're willing to invest in. Nothing is more precious than your health. Because if you're not great, then your offspring aren't great. You can't look after them. You can't perform the way you want to. Invest in in you through your fork. So of course, every time you ingest something, we use the metaphor of spam. If that was a hamburger, chips, nuggets, a, a Cornetto ice cream and a pig fat yogurt, a, a thick shake from McDonald's, there's lots of free radical damage. Free radicals are things that are powerful, uh, energy, energized protons that just bounce around in your body looking to be stabilized. They're looking for something to help them settle down and not be on this frenzied energy, just bouncing off cells, bashing into cells. What happens over time is as they're bouncing around like a pinball in a pinball machine, bang, 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 and crashing into things, what happens in some of your cells is these free radicals break the cell wall. Once they break the cell wall, there's something right in the middle of the cells. Remember, go back to your science days, guys, at schools, and you look at a cell, and inside the cell, there's something called the nucleus. And in that nucleus houses all your DNA and all of your genes, all that information in your chromosomes. What happens when a free radical just smashes through a cell wall with energy and bangs into the nucleus? It can assist in damaging all of that vital blueprinted information. And then it alters it because it's the free radical damage leads to a change in that information that's there. And that can be copied. And that copied material that is no longer sound leads to cells that metastasize, that are foreign, and become disease. So if you thought for one moment that what sits on your fork is not important, my God, I kid you not, you are an absolutely couldn't be any further from the truth. So how does this play to Tucker that this young lass is chowing into assist? Who heard has heard of those other things, antioxidants. I can hear you nodding. So what do these things do? Well, my friends, antioxidants are things that bind to those free radical and shut them down. They're like kamikazes. They bind to that free radical and shut them down, preventing that free radical from going on this frenzy and destroying cells, and the antioxidant dissolves that. So magically, absolutely of great importance is what you eat regularly. And a meal like that in front of us with a bit of steak, a bit of tuna, a bit of chicken, a bit of bison, a bit of kangaroo, you name it, some eggs, it would do wonders for us all. Magic, absolutely magical. So every meal, P, C, O, 3, 6, plus really, so it's got protein, some carbohydrate, now, these things in front of you, my friends, are all carbohydrates. This stuff on this lass's plate, greens, reds, yellows, purples, they're all carbohydrates. No, they're not, Craig, they're salad. Hello, they're all carbohydrates. The definition of a carbohydrate, any plant-based food. Carbohydrates aren't just bread, aren't just rice, aren't just pasta, aren't just oats, is not just pumpkin, is not just potato. Carbohydrates, my friends, are any plant-based foods. Lettuce, cucumber, tomato, apple, peach, pear, orange. Carbohydrates. Let's move on to the numero uno. Protein, my friends. So Today we discuss a hell of a lot about proteins. It's the one macronutrient that we look at in depth today. 
Protein, the raw building block of life. You can't survive without it. Your body is consistently creating new cells to replace the trillions of cells that are dying each and every minute of each and every day. Yes, your cells die and they need to be replenished. Where does it come from? Where does this building block of life come from? You got it, guys. Of course, your food and your proteins are critical for that. Your muscle cells, your nerve cells, all of these wonderful cells within your body are made up from these building blocks of life called proteins. They're like little Lego blocks. And these Lego blocks are, are lined up together or um, bonded together to form proteins. And it's amazing how they work. So if you're not supplying your body with regular intakes of protein, whether it's three meals, four meals, five, six, eight, doesn't matter how often, as long as you're providing the nourishment that allows you to look good, feel brilliant, and perform like you've never performed before. If you're looking good, if you're feeling good, and if you're performing like you've never performed before, and you're eating three times a day, it's working. If you need six meals a day to do it, it's working. Four, five, nine, 15, it doesn't matter. It's not one shoe fits all. So if it's three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, you name it, as long as they're the meal construction is sound. A quality protein, some good quality carbohydrates, some quality essential fats, you're on a good thing, my friend. Next to water, protein is the most abundant substance in the body. 15% of your total body weight, give or take, is protein. Wow. Wow. How cool is that? I just put that in there because I just love that photo. He's got a decent set of abs on him, some good thighs on him, some good biceps, some chest. He was a happy chicken, that fella. He was doing a lot of bench pressing and squats, that fella. He knew what was good for him to turn out the way he did. Tight, toned, and yummy. So let's get into some more of the important stuff. Protein at every meal. Why, Craig? Well, look at these things. One, muscle tissue. Proteins are not stored in your body, team, like carbohydrates, which are stored in your liver and your muscle cells, or fats, which are stored intramuscularly. They're stored within your bones. They're stored in adipose tissue or the fat you can grab. They're stored in visceral fat, the stuff around your vital organs. It's protein not. So if you don't have the raw materials to build muscle, it will break it down. It'll slow your metabolism. So what does all that mean? It simply means this, guys. With protein, because you can't store it, if you're not eating protein, you know, maybe three plus times a day, your body's going to have to get the building blocks to build new cells from somewhere else. Where are they going to get them from? If they're not getting them through food, so chicken, turkey, beef, lamb, veal, kangaroo, bison, eggs, protein powder, where's it going to get it from? Have a think about it. Ah, I hear you. You said your muscle. How correct. You're absolutely superstars. It's going to take it from your own muscle. It'll start breaking them down through this thing called the glucose alanine cycle and break your muscle down and convert it into these individual building blocks that your body can use to make new liver cells, brain cells, muscle cells, fat cells, hormone cells, wow. So there you go. You could become skinny fat. Your body could be breaking down muscle tissue, leading to a slower metabolism. Oh my God, Father. Another reason, muscle mass matters. Protein is the building block for life, guys. Appetite control. Endless amount of research has shown us that Proteins assist in controlling your appetite. Why? Well, there's calorie control. With proteins, they take a lot of energy to break them down. They help control your blood glucose levels so you won't be hangry. Once you are on an eating regime that contains a, a steady serve of protein, and we're going to see at the end of this presentation, guys, just for you ladies and you gentlemen, where's a good starting point to start with every single meal, a serving size of protein that is necessary for you to move forward 
build that body you want, have performance like you've never had, and feel magical. So yes, you won't be hangry. You won't be going, oh my God, I'm starving. I need to hook into a Tim Tam. I need a bag of chips. Give me a cake. I'm going to eat something. You, with the arm over there, come my way. I'm ready to chow down on it. Not at all, guys. Think. Control meal construction. PCO36+. Plus. Awesome. The thermic effect. What does thermic effect mean? Thermic heat effect. We're going to produce some. We're going to make heat. From what? Eating protein, guys. As it states here, protein consumption. Every time you chow down on a piece of chicken, an egg, some turkey, some salmon, some barramundi, some sardines, some mackerel. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to cost your body a lot of energy. Your body doesn't use proteins, my friend, as a sardine. It doesn't. That might be mind-blowing to you. It doesn't use it as a sardine or a piece of chicken or egg or whey protein. Couldn't be anything further from the truth. What your body does is it breaks that food down into individual building blocks called amino acids. As I stated earlier, they're like little individual Lego blocks that are bound together tightly in a bonded form. This allows proteins to be built. It states there, doesn't it, that 20 to 30% of the energy content that you consume, let's say you had 100 calories of chicken breast, it's estimated that once you hook in, chew away, masticate, it's called masticate, and chew away and break that food down into a bolus and then you swallow it and it enters your gut and then it's broken down further by acids and pepsins and enzymes, etc. And allows these individual building blocks called amino acids to leave through the small intestine into the bloodstream to be packaged up by the liver and sent to your body somewhere. That costs your body 20 to 30%. So if you've had 100 calories of chicken, 70 to 80 of those calories are yours. The rest has been lost in heat. Magical. So yes, you can burn calories whilst eating. And protein is the god. Cravings. We touched on a little bit earlier. Research continues to show that proteins insist, assist in blood sugar level control and therefore assist with sugar cravings. So you're not going to be hungry. You're not going to be looking for caffeine hits or sugar hits at 3 p.m. in the afternoon because if you're eating regular meals, again, whether it's three plus a day, three is ample, four is good, five is good, six is good. Again, it's about you, the individual, what works for you. You will be able to inhibit, eliminate, prevent, minimize any of these cravings that you get. Why? Because of these things we've talked about previously, that the thermic effect and appetite control from your proteins will allow your body to work hard to break down that food source into nourishing liquid chyme. That's how your body uses food. And allow your body the ability to build things, have it optimally working for you, flourishing, blooming, blossoming into that ability for you to reconnect with life. So again, you're not going to be saying, I need ice cream, I need potato chips, I need soft drink, I need you know, uh, uh, mocha, I need something with caffeine and sugar, I need a mother drink, I need a blue, uh, what is it called, what's that stuff? Um, um, the energy drink that's everywhere that we hear, oh, I can't, uh, Red Bull gives you wings. That's it. So all of those things, those pickups, you won't need those because your foods will be doing things for you. They're reprogramming. Remember we said at the start, it's about metabolism, reprogramming, rewiring, rebooting, a stalled metabolism that's spinning its wheels, not gaining momentum. This is all about traction, guys. Protein allows you the traction to move forward with motivated movement in a robust format. Immunity. Proteins are the building blocks for your immune system. Hello, how magical. Glutathione and glutamine are critical to your health. They come from proteins. It is absolutely magical. It's medicinal what these foods do. So again, you hear me all the time raving on 
with great fascination about letting the fork do wonders for you. Don't dig your grave with your fork. These are the reasons why, guys. Every time you put something in your mouth, there's a consequence. So the buffet of consequence is real. If you continue to eat that HI stuff, food-like stuff, that we saw before in that picture with the heart and hamburgers and chips and calamari rings and all of this stuff. That's all it is, stuff that's banging away, working on damaging your cells and initiating disease. Think about that, disease. Another breaker. See what happens when we get hangry. Don't mess with his protein. The Hulk's after his protein, guys. Protein is king. We've seen you feel better, you perform better, you look better. Isn't that what great nutrition is about, guys? By definition, remember we said you must look, you must feel, you must perform better. And protein's a governor, isn't it? Immunity. It's about muscle tissue, which is the fountain of youth. It's about improving your metabolism. It's about preventing sugar cravings. Wow, it is just magical. So you can't do without it. So what are these protein foods? Let's have a look at some. Complete lean proteins. Complete lean protein means it contains all the essential amino acids. Remember I said those little Lego blocks? Now certain ones are essential, meaning that we can't manufacture them ourselves. We need to get them through a food source. We need to get them from something we eat regularly. So complete main, uh, supply us with all of these eight to nine amino acids that we need. So things like eggs, dairy, milk, lean beef, chicken breast, turkey breast, lean pork, fish, so whether it's salmon, mackerel, herring, sardines, cod, barramundi, snapper, tuna, dory, you name it, all shellfish, so whether it's crayfish, Balmain bugs, whether it's lobster, kangaroo, venison, bison, crocodile, all of these things. Can you get the picture? Remember I was saying before, swim the ocean, walk the land. Hello? These are these protein foods, aren't they, guys? They are fantastic, and they supply the things we want. Now, not all are created equal, so there are better formats. So if there's grass-fed, if they're organic, if they're free to range, there's no doubt they are better sources. So like with our eggs, free-ranged organic eggs, so chickens that are in a happy environment, Again, there's no um, toxins that are produced. They're happy girls laying eggs for us. So, so we get a lot of that great nourishment. There's no angst and animosity within their cells. Their cells are able to flourish. That's what we're looking for, guys. So you can see all of those great protein foods. Let's snap back again and have a look again. Complete lean proteins have all of the necessary building blocks that you need to obtain from other sources because we can't produce them. Eggs, whether white or yolk, Dairy products, so your milk, your eggs, your casein and whey protein powders. It could be soy protein powders too, guys, if you need soy. There's also pea protein powders. There's hemp protein powders. There's all of those things that are, again, protein derivatives. Lean beef, guys, so again, less than 10 grams of saturated fat per 100 grams. Your chicken breast, your chicken thigh, your turkey breast, your turkey thigh, your lean pork like your butterfly steaks, great stuff. Let's move on again and have another look. So your fish, so salmon, mackerel, herring, sardines, they're all high-fat fish. They're great fat fish. They're EPA and DHA, all these essential omega-3, great for brain health, great for antioxidants and anti-inflammatory food sources. They are magical, guys, absolutely magical. So review those foods regularly. And remember we stated early on, it's about diversity and variety. Not eating the same ones all the time because all of them supply a different amino acid profile. So you may be a bit short on a certain amino acid. Maybe kangaroo supplies that. So get that variety into you guys. And this time of year where I'm presenting this information, it's winter here in Australia. It's a great time for the slow cooker. So okobuso uh, and all of those, you know, um, gravy beef, those beefs there that really do add some mouth-watering, melt-in-your-mouth textures to those slow cookers with, you know, tomato-based sauces and, ooh, yum, good taka. I just wanted to, I just wanted to throw that in there and this guy, Marcus Rule, a German bodybuilder, 
He has lots of muscle. Yes, more than most of us would have ever seen in a lifetime. Can I just have one more protein shake? So I just wanted to add that in there, guys, just as a bit of a, an icebreaker again, because there's a lot of heavy information we just covered with all of those things about wonderful proteins and what they do. And this gentleman here has muscle by the truckload. Wouldn't you suggest he is one big man, like a silverback gorilla? Yes, he's got a genetic predisposition to manufacture lean muscle tissue. He's subtly synthetic in, synthetically enhanced. Um, however, the man knows how to build muscle tissue with the right training stimulus, so the right uh, exercise routine to build muscle, and he obviously knows how to eat to optimize that outcome. Wow, one big gentleman. I've seen him in the flesh, and he, no kidding, guys, he is a big man. So now we're going to look at portions, because most important, one of the things I'm asked about most, look, like calorie count, Craig, what should I be doing? Okay, the reality is I want you to start with something that's basic, it's a blueprint, it's a nucleus, it's something to work on. Start here and over time build on it. Don't overcomplicate the process of nutrition. It's not about, remember we said one thing, it's not about calories, it's not about portion control, it's not about high fat, it's not about high carbohydrate, it's not about high protein, low protein, ketogenic, it's not about South Beach, it's not about Zone, it's not about uh, Atkins, it's about all of those things, guys. So don't overcomplicate it, just focus on construction. And we'll start with the lovely ladies because... Again, I believe in chivalry. Let's have a look at a really good starting point for ladies. So if you're eating three times a day, this is a really good starting point, ladies. Let's have a look at it, huh? There you go. A rough serve, roughly a palm. So we've got roughly a full palm size here of quality first-class protein that has all of the necessary building blocks, those essential amino acids that we talked about. So there, girls, it's about roughly 20 to 25 grams of quality protein in that bit of meat there. So, so it doesn't have to be difficult. Just use your palm as an avenue to align yourself to some success. It's about 20 to 25 grams of quality protein in each of those meals. If you're getting that 60 to 75 grams of protein a day for most ladies, and it's a general blueprint, it's a great starting point. It will do you some wonders. It's about starting to form cons some consistency, some persistency that will allow you to move forward with success. So with the ladies come the gentlemen. Gentlemen, simple. We'll use two palm sizes. Why? Well, sorry, ladies, unfortunately, in most cases, again, we males have a little more muscle tissue than you ladies. So we need to supply a little more building block to meet the needs to maintain that muscle tissue. So again, it's a really good starting point. If you find, guys, that eating two palmfuls of this protein in three meals a day is too much, guess what? You break it down. This is where you get four meals or five meals or six meals a day. You might find that eating one serving size of protein per day, uh, per meal, sorry guys, that 20 to 25 grams of protein works better for you rather than this you know, 40 to 50 grams of protein in one foul swoop. There's no right or wrong, but I tell you what this is. It's a great starting point. It gives you somewhere to build a nucleus for improvement. It gives you somewhere to test and measure. How is this working for me? Am I feeling great? Am I feeling nourished? Am I avoiding cravings? Is my health brilliant? Am I looking great? Am I performing like never before? It's a really easy, uncomplicated process that will work for you. So the secret is take action, implement this, and this is the end of the, this is the last slide of this um, presentation, guys. Start documenting questions now. What you need to talk to Craig, me about during the week when we chat about this presentation. What do you need clarity from out of this presentation? Because remember, this Transform You journey is all about what? You. Until next week, guys, get those questions down and start answering the things that we need to be doing. Take some action. Fusion. Transform you. It's all about you. And next week, 
we'll look at carbohydrates. 